and we are back with another video and today we're going to talk about trade-in prices and how you can get the most money for your trade-in when you're trading your car in on another car and the best way to get the top dollar for your car in this circumstance as all of you know and check this out there is the pink army right here but as all of you know if you've been watching a while i traded in my white 2022 scat pack in on this 2023 last call special edition swinger and i got a phenom what i believe to be a phenomenal price in a declining market on my dodge charger and in this video i'm going to show you how i did that i really did deliberately put the time in to make sure that i didn't get hosed on that charger and i was fully prepared to back out of this deal not do this deal not purchase the car or not trade in my car and purchase this car and then sell my car myself if I didn't get the price I wanted out of my charger. I was realistic about the price and I got the price I was asking for. But let's jump in this thing and I will explain to you how I did it and how you can make sure that when you trade in your car or you sell your used car that you get the best price. Now a few videos ago I backed over my Insta360 GO3 camera and it fell down. This time we're going to try it with the flip screen down so that it works and see if you can get some good video here see if it knocks it over all right let's see if you can get this shot I tried it and it didn't work again. <laughs> I guess this front, well maybe it's, I don't know, we'll see where it fell down. You, well you saw it where it fell. Anyways, uh, I'll keep trying. Maybe I'll take off the little tripod, that'll work. That'll work next time. All right, let's get this video started. All right, so let's talk about my 2022 Scatpack Charger that I ended up trading in on this Swinger just a couple of months ago. That car I bought, I think it was in July of 2022. And then I drove that car home. And if you've been following the channel, you know that because you watched me do it. And you can get the details, so if I'm wrong on these details, I apologize, but I'm going off of memory rather than going back and watching the video is, I believe I put maybe three grand down or something on the car at the time, and rates were really good, so I wasn't too worried about it. And I drove that car about, well, what do you, what do you think? This is maybe like a year and three months or something like that. I put 14,000 miles on that charger, and I did a ton of content with it. I had a lot of fun with it. It, I, it was my daily driver, so I drove it for work. So I collected mileage on it, reimbursements on it, and I made money on YouTube with it. So in the end, the car worked out for me. I had no plans on getting rid of that car until, I don't even think I was gonna get rid of it when the demon comes. But I had no plans of getting rid of that car. That was good. But I was doing research for you all to make videos on the markups and one of the dealers said would you buy it today if i sold it to you for sticker and i said yep and i went and got a check and went down there now the only thing hanging up that deal at the time was what i was going to get for my charger because i needed to sell that charger to be able to buy this new car or at the very least i needed to know that one of the cars like something had to happen that charger would have to get sold even if i bought the swinger i couldn't have the charger also it wouldn't make any sense. Now I'm just doubling my expenses in the house. So that charger had to go. So I told him to do the math, let me know what they would pay. And then I went and I did my research. And this is point number one that I'm gonna share with you all. I did my research and I found out what CarMax, Carvana, Shift, Car Buyer USA, Gimme the Vin, KBB.com, Edmonds, and all these sites, I found out what all of them would pay for the car. Put the VIN number in and they gave me a value and a cash price for the car. And in my situation, it was Car Buyer USA that offered me the highest amount of money. Now the offers were wildly swinging from crazy directions. The lowest I think was, I think it was Carvana. It was like 44 or $42,000. Unbelievable for a 2022 of 14,000 miles. At that point, I figured, I'm done. I just need to relax, keep my car. I'm not even gonna buy another car because there's no way I'm gonna get out of my charger. But then, Car Buyer USA hit me at 
$54,500. And that was good because I only owed a couple grand more than that. So it was no big deal. I'd pay to get out of it to make this deal happen, especially since I'm getting this thing at MSRP. I knew that I was going to be okay on the money. So because I had all those offers, I did have other offers, 52, 49, 48. They were all over the place. I mean, it was wild how crazy different the offers are. So you literally have to take the time and search all those websites from CarMax to KBB to, to CarBuyerUSA, GiveMeTheVin.com, Shift.com, search all those sites and find out who's gonna give you the most money. Because you will get a baseline, and then if you're good with that number, you can choose at that point, to sh if, if you have a number that you would be good with, and you know that it's pushing the envelope, to make that your baseline, in which you will take for that car when you go to that dealership. Now for me, I knew 54.5 was a phenomenal offer. I knew I'd be crazy not to take that much for that car, considering prices are softening, and I had 14,000 miles on it, and I had a fender bender in the front that did show on the Carfax. So I knew I needed to I needed to get out of this thing and and let this dealer buy it if they would pay 54,500. I was completely good to go with Car Buyer USA that if I would have just clicked let's go ahead and do this that I could sell that car. That offer was good for I think it was 5 or 6 days or something like that. So I was going to be okay. I went down to the dealership, got my check from the credit union for the new car, and I told them, if you can get me what this offer, and I showed them that offer, if you can match it, I'm not looking for you to beat it, but if you can match this offer, we're good. We'll do this deal, and I'll buy this other car. If not, I'm not saying I won't buy this car, because the price was too good on this car for me not to buy it, and it was everything I've ever wanted in a car, but I'm probably not going to sell you my car if it's less than that only because I knew I could literally just sell it to Car Buyer USA and they would take the car for 545. So I didn't have to trade the car in at that point cuz I had a buyer in my back pocket. I also knew that if Car Buyer USA was offering me 545 that I could probably put the car based on comparables, which is the other thing you need to do, do the searching to see what other cars are listed at. But remember asking price is not sales price you can never go off of what a dealership or what a used car seller is asking for their car to determine what you would get for your car without finding out what the car is actually sold for you don't know what they're selling for so you know that if you sell it to car buyer usa for 54.5 that's cash money in your pocket but if you put it up on facebook marketplace or Auto Trader, or wherever you put cars at now, that you may or may not get an offer for 58000 that you're asking for that car. The cars may be selling once they sell for 55000 in which case you maybe get $500, but you spend a lot of time dealing with drama and clowns from the internet wanting to come and drive your car and waste your time. So remember, you're just doing the research to see how many are available, because remember what we talked about in the other videos, supply versus demand. If there is a lot of supply, especially in your general region, in let's say a $57,000 price range, $58,000 price range, for you to sell your car, you've got to be better priced than all those other cars. So if the average price is 58, 57, what you gotta fight in your own head is the desire to say, well, my car is better, my car is nicer, my car has less miles, my car is a better color, I put some upgrades on my car, so I want to get more money for my car. So even though everybody's asking $57,000, $58,000 for my car, I'm going to put it up for $59,000 and then I'll come down to fifty eight. That is a horrible strategy and that is a strategy that will have your car sitting on the market forever with you stuck with it. So keep that in mind when you're talking to a dealer about trading it in, you're coming up with a price that don't just assume you're gonna be able to go up onto the open market and because everybody's asking 58, 59,000 for their car, that's what you're gonna get. You may end up completely burned and getting 55 grand. I could have put my scat pack up and because of the Carfax, because of all the competition out there, ended up getting $54,000 for that car and losing money 
in comparison to what Car Buyer USA was willing to give me and what ultimately the dealership was willing to give me because the market was softening, one. Two, there was a lot of competition out there. And three, buyers shopping private party are generally expecting the cars to be cheaper. They're not looking to pay full retail value for a car that is in your driveway or parked on a dirt road somewhere on the side of a busy road with a for sale sign on it. They're not gonna give you what they'd pay a dealer because there's this perception of value that comes with buying a car from the dealer. A perception of a recourse if something were to go wrong when you buy it from a dealer. A perception of legitimacy despite all the crookedness we talk about when you buy a car from a dealer and that has a quantifiable value. So keep that in mind. So that's the longest, biggest point is find out what you're willing to take, find out what you can get, make a very, very educated decision on whether or not you want to tackle selling it yourself and then go ahead and wrestle with the dealership on the price you're getting for your car. I also got to mention that while I talk about all this stuff, some states do, and I wish California was this way, and this is where you're going to comment about California folks, but some states, most states, will allow, if, let's say you're getting $20,000 for your trade-in and you pay $50,000 for your car to reduce the sales tax by the trade-in amount since you've already paid taxes on that trade-in. Unfortunately, Californians, we don't get that option. We're going to pay full tax on the car when we buy it, and we're going to pay full tax on the car we actually buy, the new car we buy, and not get any credit for the tax we paid on the last car, which is why a lot of people, especially in California, like to lease cars because you only pay tax on the payments for the time that you own that car, which is why I did that on the Lamborghini, even though it was an open-ended lease, and that car will be paid off soon, and I'll own it forever, is I only pay taxes for the time I owned it because I didn't expect that I would own it as long as I did. So that's an issue. Keep that in mind when you're trading in a car versus selling a car on the open market. You may be much better off trading that car in in some other states. I am not fully familiar with how that works, so go ahead and do your own research on that. But it's something, if you're not in California, to keep in mind where it may benefit you and there's some money there that you'll recoup by trading in a dealership. Next. Dealers will always tell you, don't worry about washing your car. Don't worry about cleaning it up. Just bring it in here. It's going to be a basic mathematical equation. We're going to put your VIN number in, and we're just going to make sure the car is structurally sound. So then you don't wash it. You leave a little door ding, a little, little scuff and a scratch on the car. Let me just be real clear that that's total BS. They want you to bring it in dirty. They want you to bring it in with the ding on it. They want you to bring it in with the scuffs and scratches and the interior messy and everything else. They want you to do that because they want to beat you up on that car. They want to walk you over and go, yeah, but see, it's going to need a lot of work. It needs this ding fixed. Your front splitter still has the, the splitter guards on it. So your, your front splitter is going to need to be replaced because it's got oxidation underneath and some, some water damage and some scratching from leaving it on there. And all these things that are going to give the dealership an opportunity to nitpick the daylights out of your car and hit you at a lower price. So what I recommend is you get your car in the best possible shape. You get the door ding guy to fix the door ding. You buff out any scratches. You wash that sucker. You make it look like it the day you bought that car. Empty out all your trash from inside the car, even in the center console. And even what I do is I leave, I always leave these things here, not because I'm trying to flex, whoops, but it's like brand new. So I will fluff that thing back out there and they'll think, man, this thing's been, been taken care of. It's just creating a perception of value, a perception of condition that makes them feel like the overall condition of this car is actually good. By the way, don't forget about cleaning the engine bay. If it's covered in dirt, covered in grime, covered in grease and crap, then they're gonna open it up and know that you don't care about your car and that they've gotta actually put time in to clean that thing up. So detail the engine compartment. Make your car look great. Take the extra time, spend two or $300, Make it look great before you take it in there for them to appraise it. Now, some car salesmen say, oh, we don't really care. They do care because you're dealing with human, be human beings. You're dealing with human beings where their brains are helping them or leading them to make this decision. While the computer's making a decision on the price on the car, 
when you start to negotiate that price up from what the computer said it's worth, it's gonna come down to that individual's perception of the value and condition of that car and their ability to resell that car if that car is something they would put on their lot. So you wanna make that car look great. Plus, if all it's gonna need is a wash and to stick it out on the lot, great. If you've done brakes recently, if you have new tires on it, have all those receipts, books, and records and show them all this was done because that tells them up front they can take away from the average cost of refurbing that car to be able to sell it if you've already done this and if you've done it all the dealership they can easily verify all that maintenance was done so the recent service was done the tires are new the brakes are newer they're not gonna have to do any of that stuff which means they can give you a little bit more money for that car and actually take away from the cost that they have built into the offer for them to refurb and get that car back on the lot so lead with the condition of that car make it perfect as perfect as possible and if not then don't talk about it if you you know you need brakes don't talk about it if you know your tires are bad don't talk about it just know you're gonna have to wrestle with them a little bit more because they're gonna go out and check the tread most likely almost 100% of the time they're gonna make sure they're not gonna have to drop two thousand dollars on tires next now this one applies to California for sure out of state as well if you because because the tax issues when you trade in your car if you get a credit for the taxes you may be stuck with trading the car in but you can still do this which is negotiate the price separately meaning make an ask them if they buy cars before you even go in there to buy a car if they do then find out what they would pay for that car but without the other car being involved without you purchasing the other car and that might take a little bit extra work and you may need to go to a couple different dealerships to to find out what they would pay you for the car outright just to buy it from you and then negotiate that price the best you can and then go back into the negotiations on the trade on the on the new purchase versus your trade in with that baseline here's why because remember the four square we talked about in the in one of the previous videos that four square is designed to take you through all the different aspects of the purchase which is how much do you want to pay in cash how much do you want your payment to be how much do you want your trade in for and then you're gonna go through this whole little dance with them and pretty soon you're not gonna know what in the hell you're getting for your car you're not gonna know what in the hell you're paying for the car all you're gonna know is what your payments gonna be and your down payments gonna be and they may steal your car from you so separating out the price for the car you're trading in is really wise that way you can have that as a separate scenario and if you can work that out and even if you're negotiating all of it together separate that out tell them you would like a separate piece of paper and you want to talk about this here but keep in mind if they're gonna come down on their car they're probably gonna come down on your car if they go up on their car they might go up on your car either way you're gonna be getting nailed so it's best to know what you could get for your car absent the buying the new car just simply handing the keys to them and selling it to them or at the very least selling it to one of the third parties so having these things as separate as possible so you don't lose lose the picture on what they're offering for your car even in the middle of negotiation you'll ask them remind me again what are you giving me for my car and because you did all your research and because you got all the other cash offers you can go back well I'm giving you this price great let's separate that out now in the middle of the negotiations, I said this the whole time when I was buying this car. If I can't get that price, that's cool. I'll buy the car anyways. I'll buy the car without trading in that car. Now, I knew I could do that because I was already approved for the other loan without having to sell my other car. And I told Navy Federal when I called to verify the terms of the loan that I am not selling the other, I, I want this approval without having to sell my other car. So that put me in the driver's seat that I could separate that thing from that transaction and the entire time they wanted to bring it back in, even just a little bit, I just said, don't worry about it. If you can't give me 54,500, we're good. I'll just buy the car without it. But I have to think about it. I'm not exactly sure what I'll do, but I need to know. But I could do that and I may still do that. But they knew there was a chance that I would use that as an excuse to get out of this deal if they didn't give me 54,500. Plus, they wanted a 2022 Charger. I knew that they knew they could turn around and sell that car. Still under warranty, recently serviced. The car was in great condition other than the little minor fender bender that I got into. 
So with that, everybody, hope this helps you. Stay vigilant, stay strong. Don't let these dealers take advantage of you. Please like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.